everyone. Welcome back to our Fanboy TV six-hour-long South by Southwest live broadcast with a bunch of filmmakers. I am one of your hosts, Gavin Stone, joined by... Chris Rachel Osland, and we are here with... Rebecca Johnson. Who did this amazing little depressingly sad film called Honey Trap. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's tell everyone a little bit about what Honey Trap is. Uh, well, Honey Trap is a, is a British film. It's set in South London, in Brixton, where I am from, and it's a girl's eye view of gang culture, basically. So... Um, it tells the story of Layla, 15-year-old Layla, who is sucked into a relationship with the top boy in the gang and, well, she ends up being involved in a tragic act of violence. Yes, quite, quite tragic. I didn't actually see that one coming at the end. I was expecting her to go a different route, but she was stupid and did what she did. Yeah, she's also <laughs> 15. I mean, see, I think that's one of the great things about something like this is with the coming-of-age story, you're supposed to do stupid things at that age because you're not that stupid. bright yet. <laughs> I'm trying to give her a little credit. <laughs> Maybe I'm over. Well, no, in all <laughs> seriousness, I it, it, you know, it's about young people, not just Layla, but, mm -hmm. you know, the, the whole group of young people being sucked into violence. And, of course, we know that happens not just in South London, but in many places. And, yes, I do think that there is a difference between uh, a, a young person, of uh, their mind, their, uh, their grip on consequence on reality than with an adult. And I think that they should be tried accordingly, differently. Mm. I actually completely agree with that. I mean, there's plenty of studies out there that show that uh, it takes a lot longer than people think for us to un actually understand long-term consequences of actions, things along those lines, and trying younger and younger children to, as adults, it's just a horrible thing to be doing. They really don't get it, especially like really young kids in this country, like 11-year-olds being tried as an adult. Mm -hmm. That kid has no mm -hmm. idea what they did. Right, yeah. So what I found interesting about Honey Trap was it's continuing this new trend of these coming-of-age movies that are a lot darker. They're not happy like we used to have in the 80s, which I don't even know. I, I just remember Goonies and stuff like that. But <laughs> um, did you find it difficult to tell such a tragic, hard-edged story from the point of view of a kid? I don't know. I mean, I was just drawn to the story um, that I wanted to tell, I guess. Um, I felt it was important. I've worked with young people in my area for a long time, and uh, there's a lot of poverty and there's a lot of deprivation. There's also a lot of spirit. There's a lot of joy and exuberance, and I hope that I've captured that too. I think that often when you're young, I'm certainly no exception. You know, you can be dragged into things that to <laughs> to an adult seem really grim and sad, but to you, it's just like the most exciting place to mm -hmm. be with the most exciting people. So uh, that's partly, I suppose, where you can be dragged down the wrong path um but yeah i didn't sort of set out thinking i'm gonna make a sad and tragic <laughs> film it was just uh, the story just and the characters and the world that i was yeah drawn to speaking of the characters the actress you got to play layla was fantastic is she really that young or is she older she's a little older but okay. um she was like 18 19 when we shot the film and she's a little older now she's she just got the lead in a U.S. TV series. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, Recovery Road, being made by ABC. So that's fantastic. And Lucian, who plays Troy, has also got a series regular in Screen Queens, which is the new uh, series by the Glee creators. That is amazing, because you don't usually hear so like indie films like yours being a launching pad for people to make it on, on TV, especially across the pond here. Yeah. Well, black actors in the UK, it, there isn't a lot of work mm -hmm. for them. You know, as you know, a lot of our content is period drama. But we don't make a hell of a lot either. <laughs> so, you know, they, did, they were smart in both mm -hmm. coming out here and they've been plugging away. And it's taken them kind of a year, a year and a half. But I mean, it's pretty impressive. They're both obviously very talented mm -hmm. and very driven and focused. So, um, but it's obviously fantastic for the film that they've scored these oh plum yeah. roles just as we are coming out to South by Southwest. Uh, so have you presented the film anywhere else yet? Um, only at the London Film Festival. Okay. That was its premiere, so that's in, a, in its hometown. How have the audience have been taking the film? Well, it's been really, it's been great because quite a lot of people have been saying, I'm from Chicago or I'm from Detroit. It's just like that here. It's just like that here. It's and, and how much they relate and how much the story is, is universal. And so for me, that's, you know, I've never been to Chicago or Detroit. So mm -hmm. it's incredible to feel that you've made something that resonates with people um and yeah some people have been really really moved you know and i i, I love it i love it it's amazing um so you said that you used to work with young people and now you're making movies with this uh was it working with young people that inspired you to get into filmmaking or uh, was no it's a filmmaker separate? i was a filmmaker already um 
but I started working with young people in my community and it changed the way I was telling stories, it changed my process, it changed the type of stories that I was telling. So I tend to get inspired by, by people around me. And, and What sort of films were you making before you were working with young people? Is it going to be happy, shiny films? <laughs> <laughs> like little infomercials for all the kids she worked with? It was My Little Pony. Don't do she drugs. was making My Little Pony movies that were stop motion animation. No, they weren't. I, I made a kind of urban fairy tale, which was mm -hmm. kind of like a reworking of The Little Mermaid. Um, that was like my first calling card short. So different from, yeah, mm -hmm. now. But I mean, that was a long time ago, so. Yeah, but then I feel like this is now, I've spent a long time in the kind of urban world of, of Honey Trap, and, it, and I f with Honey Trap, it for me marks the kind of closure of a chapter. So I want to move forward in, in new directions. And some of the similar themes I'll still continue with. I love telling girls' stories. There aren't enough of them mm -hmm. out there. I like stories about underdogs. I think I would like to tell not necessarily a happier story, but maybe a story well, where British. I don't think you're allowed to tell a happy story. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's no official law against it. You know, I'd like to tell a story. I think where uh, with an action heroine who gets mm -hmm. to kick a bit of ass. See, you know? I would love something like that, and that's one of the reasons we need more female directors because mm -hmm. it's really difficult to get someone to actually cast a woman as a lead in something where she's going to be doing something other than like, let me see if I can get both my butt and my boobs into this particular pose. Am I am I good? Um, and so I. I would love, and I don't think that you see as much of that when you have a female director who's actually letting them genuinely kick some butt. Yeah, and I think there was a time, you know, with, with films like Alien and Terminator, mm -hmm. where I think there was more risk taking and mold breaking happening for mm -hmm. a while. And then we kind of went into this very kind of narrow, restricted, uh, sort of in terms of gender roles yeah. and what the market was c what considered to be which is horrible because those two movies that you cited in particular those are still considered classics today Absolute those are women classics. that are still considered heroines um, you know these movies are 30 35 years old now and people still watch them absolutely I think that says that people like these characters maybe there's a hint there um, and if they were films obviously they are exceptionally good films it's not just because they've got female yeah. characters <laughs> in but yes if you have a female character mm -hmm. in in a really good genre movie which is really exciting and mm -hmm conceptually original, then it's not a woman's movie anymore. Yeah. It's just a great movie. Yeah, nobody talks about aliens as like, oh, well, you know that female alien movie that was all about women and aliens and whatnot. They're just like, yeah, Sigourney Weaver kicked ass and everybody else did too. Yeah, so we need a new Sigourney Weaver, mm -hmm. you know? I think it's about time we I had agree. another really fantastic female action heroine. So, you know, hopefully I'll find her. She's like, I'm gonna write her in my next movie and everyone's gonna love it forever. <laughs> <laughs> so, ass kicking female. What's what's going to be the story behind it? She going to be a secret agent? She going to be like a boxing fighter who has to go avenge her fallen brothers or something? I don't know. I quite like I quite like um yeah the women in a man's world thing. So yeah, I like quite like brother sister mm -hmm. thing. That's something I'm working on at the moment. Um, but you know, it could end up. I, I've got various ideas. I like sports movies as well, actually. <laughs> oh, you should do like an all female <laughs> version of Fight Club. <laughs> Back alleys in London, she had to go, f the trailers are all dark and gritty, she's all putting on the headband, yeah, I can totally see that. The headband's good detail. <laughs> right? You that. can't go to Fight Club without a headband, because then you look like, you know, all the fighting video games, you can make the little poses and everything. Fantastic, maybe I'll use some of the models that you've got outside. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> Kayla from Dawson Toy Museum set up a whole He-Man diorama out there, so. Yeah, if you check on our Facebook and Twitter feeds, you'll be able to see a ton see of photos of our wonderful guests there, actually with our exciting Castle Grey School. Yep, so where can people see this movie at South by Southwest? Well, they can see it. We've had two of our three screenings, but they can still see it on Wednesday, uh, March the 18th, 11 a.m. at the Rollins Theatre at the Long Centre. And do you have a distribution yet for it? We've got a distributor in the UK. It's coming out in the UK in May. We're looking for a distributor in the US. So hopefully it will be, um, yeah, not too long to the score a deal. I have a feeling it'll be really quick with the high caliber of the acting and everything in this movie. It, there's no way it's not gonna get picked up. That's the way I look at it. Cause it was like, wow, this is sadly depressingly awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I put it when I got done watching. I was like, wow. <laughs> Great movie. So thanks for being on the show. Thank Have you a for fantastic me. time at South by Southwest. I hope everyone loves the movie. I hope it gets picked up. And good luck to the actors who already scored some major that gigs just with it. That is such great news. Yeah. I yeah. love hearing things like that. Yeah, no, it's good. I'm happy too. All right. Thank so thanks you. for being on. We'll we'll be back with more after this.